You are listening to the podcast of the Maciasz Korvinas Collegium, the largest talent management institute in Hungary. If you want to know more about our mission, please look up our English website at mcc.hu slash en or check out our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter channels. For interesting articles and analysis of our professors, external contributors, and students, look up our knowledge base at korvinak.hu slash en. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Bimba, a junior researcher from Learning from Asia Project. And uh, uh, we are starting our podcast from January, and we are really excited to share with you. And this is our first podcast, and we are going to talk about the uh, Myanmar education system and Hungarian education. So we have a, a doctoral PhD student from Myanmar, whose name is Thiri, Thiri and uh, she's my classmate, she's my friend, and I'm really happy to have you here. And uh, Thiri, can I please ask you to briefly introduce yourself? Thank you, Bimba. Hello, everyone. My name is Thiri. I am from Myanmar, formerly known as Bama, and I am doing my PhD at um, LTE BPK. Uh, you're studying in Hungary, and what? let's start with why did you come here, and what was your first impression to be a PhD student? In Hungary. In Hungary, of course. Okay, let's start from the, the reason why I wanted to do PhD in Hungary, or why I came here. Um, okay, I think I should start from my uh, background, yeah, sure, <laughs> a little bit definitely. of background. So I started um, to do PhD in my country. Um, I did it for a year, it, it was a preliminary course. And um, for me, it was um, very stressful because I have to work at the same time doing my PhD. And uh, um, like something which is, I, I would say I was very lucky because I have never applied for any scholarship in my life before. And by the time I was really stressful and considering about, you know, quitting PhD <laughs> in my wow. country, I saw uh, a scholarship announcement in my department in the University of Education by the time I was working. Uh, it was a Stipendium Hungarian Scholarship Program. And I decided, okay, let's give it a try. <laughs> and I applied for it and uh, I got it. <laughs> so yes, ev every time uh, people ask me, especially Hungarian friends, Hungarian people, they ask me, why Hungary? Why did you choose Hungary? And then I, um, my reply is always, um, maybe Hungary chose me. <laughs> oh, that's a great reply, actually. Yeah. Maybe I should say to other people <laughs> when they ask me. <laughs> so yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> wow, that's interesting story. And after you came here, um, how were you adjusting to Hungary? And how about other things? For example, food, uh, weather. So you did not have any challenges. Hmm. Weather, food, everything is different. <laughs> different. <laughs> yes, like it's um, black and white. Let's say because I come, I come from a, a very hot region. Uh, the coldest temperature in my place is around 11 degrees Celsius. The coldest. <laughs> yes, the wow. coldest. That's my winter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a huge difference. And I think I'm adjusting quite well. Um, food, very different because in my country in general and, and specifically me, I like to eat a lot of, you know, green leaves, vegetables, fruits. But here it's... Um, not so easy to find vegetables every day. Like you can see vegetable in, in grocery stores, but they are expensive and you cannot find some vegetables all, you know, all year round. So that's a big difference for me. Just to move on from Hungarian country to now Hungarian education. So as a PhD student, um, what was your first impression when you get to your university? Um, okay, before I came here, uh, I have to mention that this Hungary is my very first foreign country that I, you know, move and live for a long time. And I was concerned, I concerned about um, the language barrier, because, you know, English is not my first language. And, and 
neither for Hungarians. Yes, and I was like, right. okay, yeah. what did, what, you know, what's their accent like? And uh, will I understand them? Um, there was no problem. Um, th- I think uh, Elte and specifically my faculty, PPK, our faculty, it's incredible. Uh, the professors, the, the office staff, everyone, they are really professional. And I had no problem with dealing with them and everything was smooth. In terms of communication. Yes, in terms of communication. And regarding the education system, mm, for the first impression... You know, it was, I had to make a small adjustment in the beginning, you know, okay. weeks, because it's very different um, the way the teacher approaches the lesson. And um, in my country, maybe that's uh, true for most of the Asian countries, the culture, the, the respect <laughs> for oh, yes. the authorities and teachers, yes. we have to show great respect. But here it is very flexible and I feel so uh, relieved. You know, you can um, leave the room if you need to use the, the restroom Bathroom, yeah. or whatever reason. Uh, the teachers are very understanding. That's and, very um, true. Yeah. And you can even argue with your teachers mm-hmm. and they accept it as a, uh, as a good thing, <laughs> which is uh, quite the opposite in my country because I, I myself is a, like, l- let's say, um, I really like to question, you know, Myself, not just my teachers, I really like to think in different ways, different perspectives, and I think I, I can do it freely here in Hungary, and I'm happy for that. Yeah, when you say that uh, when we argue as a student, they receive it positively, I mean, the teachers, and I think they receive it as that, wow, this student is willing to learn something, and she would like to... Uh, explore more something that's how they receive but in Asian countries uh, we of course the teachers think it in this way however we need to go through a certain process yes <laughs> to have this argument or to have this debate for example um, we need to ask permission we need to ask uh, raise our hand to ask a question so that's yes that's exactly true that was my exact feeling when I entered Then how about since we have been here almost five years and uh, how do you think the PhD journey and Hungary, the country itself, shaped you personally and professionally? Okay, personally, let's start from personally. Um, I think from our point of view towards Hungary, there was... um, We, we should uh, include COVID <laughs> pandemic oh, <yes. laughs> because I think COVID plays a significant role in, yeah. in this five-year journey because I remember uh, we had a semester before COVID, before pandemic, and it was amazing. I, I love it. You know, we made friends and we yeah. went to the classes. We discussed after the classes. We occasionally meet and talked about the coursework. It was Perfect. And I really enjoyed it. And then pandemic hit us and everything stopped. We moved online and we had less interaction with, you know, each other. And um, but hmm, even with this uh, challenge, I think um, Hang- what Hungary uh, shaped me uh, throughout my PhD journey is uh, Hungary made me more independent, let's say. <laughs> And regarding the professional mm-hmm. perspective, I think my experience uh, being a PhD student in Hungary this almost five years uh, gave me so many um, valuable lessons. Like Because before, um, before I started my PhD journey, I was uh, really, how to say, straightforward. When I look at something, really, I look at only one thing, one way. Like, if it is not white, that's black. <laughs> uh-huh. Like, um, and maybe that also depends on my background. Uh huh. One re- one example. If I have to give you one example, um, let's see. When I was choosing, deciding the topic, the title for my master's thesis, 
even if I am really interested in something like motivation or something, I couldn't because clearly that's not from my field because I specialized in educational administration and supervision and motivation belongs to educational psychology. I cannot choose it. <laughs> so I, of course, we were like, as, as the master's student, we were like, oh, why we can approach it from, you know, philosophical point of view, something like that. Um, although we didn't like that, you know, way of thinking that, that, you know, put us in the box. I came here and I see that everything is possible. <laughs> you can, you know, use a word from other field, but you can present it, approach it from your field of study. Okay. And um, I was very happy with this um, situation. And then later on, when I keep reading and, you know, writing articles to publish, communicating with my supervisor, and then I realized that, huh, I, you know, I fixated on the like what how do i say belief from my country mm -hmm. like sometimes i was really you know strict on something like i i don't know i failed to you know approach it from a different path different perspective oh that's an interesting <laughs> story so in a way your mindset was shifted uh in a different set like yes probably grown mindset <laughs> yes yes and i love it <laughs> Wow, that's an interesting story that you have never shared before with me. Really? <laughs> yeah. And then how about, <clears throat> uh, so was there any moment that uh, was, that gave you a big impact to you in, in the, in terms of education field? Um, yes. When uh, you're studying or when you're, you know, talking with your supervisor or when you're learning something new. Mm -hmm. Was there anything impactful? Yes. Um, I'm not saying this just to, you know, make you, the Learning from Asia project, mm -hmm. feel good. <laughs> I'm honestly saying that um, when I was trying to write this article for Learning from Asia conference, mm -hmm. I was communicating with my supervisor as well. She helped me. Uh, she also read my article. And um, this, uh, the whole process of, uh, you know, trying to see my PhD research through the perspectives of Asia as method, learning from Asia, lens from these perspectives. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I think I, you know, developed this uh, new insight because before that, I was always, like, like uh, Professor Gabor mentioned, um, always try to find references and literature from the Western countries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although in my mind, when I find two resources, for example, I was looking for a validated questionnaire to use in my research. And if I find two sets of questionnaires uh, from, from a Western country and an Asian country, I tend to rely on Asian one because I thought we have similar background, yes. similar cultural background compared to the Western one. So probably this one might work better <laughs> in my country. I have this, you know, uh, thought in my mind, but speaking of literature and everything, we tend to have, a, how do we say, great impression on Western countries. Mm -hmm. And working for this Learning from Asia project, you know, writing this article and preparing for conferences and presentations, I, you know, this project helped me um, to realize that um, there is another way <laughs> to shape my research, uh, not just talking about Western references, Western literature and presenting my uh, Asian findings. I can also cross-reference uh, with the results from Asian countries. Yes. That that is a great impact for me, I think, and I can I can use it in my you know writing my dissertation, and I'm really thankful for that. <laughs> wow, I'm really happy to hear this feedback or the comment to our project. So uh, my next question is, how has being an Asian student in Hungary uh, shaped your uh, shaped you personally? So. How is it to be an Asian student in European country? Okay. Um, was it a struggle for you or was it just fine uh -huh. for you? Well, in the beginning, 
there was no struggle. I was fine. I was very happy, you know, over the moon. <laughs> Maybe some people might say that because it's, you know, you are in a honeymoon period. But I don't think it's uh, because of the honeymoon period. In general, I'm happy. I'm okay with. I, I'm happy with Hungary. Um, but you know, since as you live here for longer period, and you started to miss uh, the feeling of belongingness, mm -hmm. because I didn't realize that when I was in my country, I always felt that I don't fit into this culture, my own culture. <laughs> <laughs> I I I I I cannot you know I don't like these customs and traditions and blah blah blah. But uh, then I moved to Hungary. I came here for you know to pursue my PhD, and I was happy. Ha! Huh, I don't have cultural shock. I'm okay. You know, other than the coldness of the people, <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> and um, and then uh, because imagine in my country, I am a. Burmese, the, the majority of the people, and I live in the central region. And, you know, I can say that I, I am from a, you know, privileged group. So although I understand and I see things and I, I see what, um, you know, how, how it feels to be a minority or to be a smaller group of people in, in a place, I, I understand it, but I didn't, you know, comprehend it. <laughs> so I came here and, okay, uh, everything is different. I look different. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that that's the first thing. Um, physically, I, I look very different, and we think differently, and we approach things differently. Everything, and in the beginning, I you know was aggressive like to myself. Uh -huh. mm. Why? Why? Why these people think this way? No, this is the right thing. What I think is right. Ah. <laughs> and then, and then you know slowly but gradually, like like that. The example I told you before, when my friend pointed out that mm -hmm. maybe from their perspective, I might be rude because I didn't greet probably. verbally. Yes. Probably. So I was like, ah, oh, okay, then that's not a quick process. It's a lengthy process, but slowly I, you know, realize and I learned that um, there are, you know, this is this is why cultural differences is a topic <laughs> to teach and to discuss in the classroom. In my master's classes, we had a module <laughs> for this cultural differences. And of course, we read the books and we discuss about it in the class, but, you know, superficially, to be honest. <laughs> and when we really see it in our PhD classes in Hungary, everyone is different, even though, you know, we came from Asia, from the same continent, but we are still different because from different countries, even from the same country. <laughs> like the other Burmese students, you know, students from Myanmar, we are also different. And then that's when I literally <laughs> comprehend and understand the cultural differences. Uh, that's right. And uh, when you mentioned about the classroom, so I already know our classroom, obviously, but our audience does not know. So uh, could you please reflect on your classroom, like, uh, how is it? Um, so we have a separation, mm -hmm. big separation between Hungarian students and international students. So the Hungarians have a class in the Hungarian language, but we do have a class in English uh, language. So what do you think of this system? And um, does did, did it impact, give an impact into your personal life or academic life? Uh, what was it? Okay, um, these two different system, like Hungarian, you know, how do we call it? Hungarian program, Hungarian based program, like the language of instruction is Hungarian and English program. These two different tracks doesn't affect on my personal life or prof uh, professional life, but I think it's not because of these two, you know, separation. I wouldn't say it's separation because uh, as for Hungarian students, they should, you know, they should have a, an option to learn in Hungarian. And I remember we had one or two Hungarian students in our classes mm -hmm. uh, in English program. Mm -hmm. And from, you know, looking at our PhD classes, we have, um, let's say, we can uh, divide the students into three groups. <laughs> uh, most of us are international students. Okay, international students and Hungarian students, two groups. And then 
some of us are from Asia, Asian students, mm -hmm. and some are from, I think, Central Asia. Even from, Pakistan, yeah, Pakistan. even from Asia, that's also, I notice the difference because from Southeast Asia, Asian countries, and including China, Mongolia, uh, students from these countries are tend to be like more silent in the class. <laughs> and um, yeah, and the other, you know, students from Central Asia or I don't know, Africa or Middle East, they are more active and, you know, they never hesitate to express their opinion. And uh, when it comes to Hungarian students, they are, I think they are in between, <laughs> between the Asian students and, and the, um, the other students from the other parts of the world. They are not always, you know, they are not uh, controlling the conversation, but when they have to say something, they say it straight. <laughs> uh, when it comes to Asian students, we are like... Silent. Silent, and if we must say something because the teacher is looking and you have to put some input, <laughs> then we say it, but we, we are not so... The language we use is not so strong. I mean, uh, the, the words. We... Asian students have softer, softer tone <laughs> compared to the other students, and I noticed that. And try not to hurt the other yes. person's feeling. Yes. And try to insert some kind words. <laughs> Even when we are rejecting something, we don't say no. No. <laughs> we just say, we imply it. Yeah, so. that's a long journey <laughs> yes. to arrive at the last station. For the you know, listener, station. right? <laughs> But in a way, I think that the... I like the way it is. I mean, the, the international Hungarian, but of course, sometimes there is a bit struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, you know, I would like to know more about more Hungarian culture or etc. Then in this sense, I miss this element. Uh, I mean, to combine these two classes. Yes, yes, exactly. And um, I often heard from the, you know, the administration mm -hmm. part of the university, they also want to integrate Hungarian students and international students, and it's not easy. Yeah, it's yeah, not happening yet. That's true. That's that was also my feeling. But I still love the way it is. To be honest, uh, to move on to our next question, um, what is the? So we have visited to the Stergom uh, Secondary School uh, last year. I think it was uh, In, October. Uh, October. Yeah. Yes. So I would like to say thank you to the Doba yes. Catalin uh, Secondary School. Uh, uh, thank you for having us. Us means that Philippine, Burma, Burma means Myanmar, Mongolia, Vietnam, Laos, China, China and Indonesia, Malaysian Malaysia. PhD students have visited this secondary school in last October. And we... Uh, get to uh, go inside of Hungarian education. We had the opportunity to do an observation uh, in the English language class. And, you know, even though it was a short amount of time, it gave us so much insightful uh, ideas and insightful uh, thoughts about what's the difference between difference and similarities between our country and Hungarian education system. So let's please have a moment uh -huh. to go back to that uh, visit in the secondary school. And uh, could you please reflect on... Yes, sure. <laughs> It was a great experience for me because that's that was my first time visiting a Hungarian high school. And uh, before we visited there, I think when we were discussing in one of our Asian PhD forum, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Richard mentioned that, uh, you know, high schools in Hungary operate differently. So if we visit one high school, uh, maybe this school operate in this way, but the other school Operating. might be different yeah. yeah so i would okay i will keep that in mind but you know we can still grasp the the general some ideas, yeah yes. some idea and uh, to be honest i was very curious about the teachers <laughs> because i myself i was a uh, me too <laughs> high school teacher in my country and uh, you know the teacher salary is very very poor in my country mm -hmm. and then 
in Hungary, that's also, uh, you know, a discussion, <laughs> still going ongoing discussion. So I was like, okay, let's see how, you know, the salary. <laughs> I mean, the, the salary is low. We know that here and in my country as well. And I want to see, okay, that's the same thing. Then what is the difference <laughs> between the teachers from two countries? And I would say, to my surprise, the teachers that I that we met in Dobo Kotling Gymnasium, they are very professional. And um, we met English language teachers. And their their English language proficiency is yes really that was high. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was like, huh, okay. Although the you know payment is very low, they still commit to their work and they show their professionalism. And I was that was a that was a good thing to see. Mm-hmm. And um, who you asked me to you know compare Reflect the, the re- yes the comparing Hungarian education and your country's education. Um, uh, okay. Um, in terms of classroom, in terms of students, mm-hmm. uh, because we got to see several things. Uh, we even we got to uh, we had the opportunity to ask questions from yes. the students and teachers, so they were actually being honest to us how the yep. school operates. So if you look back on it, yeah, that's really great. And um, before I visited this high school. Um, from my experience in my day to you know everyday daily life in Hungary, the impression I have on Hungarian people in general and Hungarian youth, you know, uh, the young people, I thought they are really shy, <laughs> especially to talk to a stranger, even uh, you know, especially in a foreign language, they are shy, and it which is understandable, and. Uh, People from my country, kids from my country, they might also be shy, but I think they are uh, more curious <laughs> to talk to a stranger. You know, even though they don't speak proper English, they will use their broken English and they will try to communicate. And that's my impression. Like, oh, they don't want to put effort. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they know English. They can say, you know, I'm sh- I'm sure they can, you know, communicate in English, even though it's not perfect English. Like my English is also not perfect, but uh, they don't want to put effort. They just say no, no. Uh-huh. And but when I visited this high school, the high school students there, they are not shy. They are really active in the class, and we, you know, I always try to be ethical all the time, and you know, we the. The group leader, you guys also reminded us, you know, to ask for permission to take pictures yes. and some things. Mm-hmm. I was always in, in, in the classrooms where I visited, where I observed. In, in the very beginning, we asked the teachers and the students, is it okay if we take pictures of the classroom, how things are running? If, you are, if, if the kids are not okay, we can, you know, cancel it. take out yes, their faces. Exactly. We just want the classroom. Mm-hmm. And they are like, fine, we are fine. And even the, the high school students in the first classroom we visited, they are like, let's take the pictures together. <laughs> <laughs> and they are not shy and they try to communicate with us. They are more open to us. Yes. So I was like, okay, then this is also a really good input for me to, you know, not to fixate on my <laughs> belief. Like Hungarian people are shy. Maybe there are shy people, but... No, yeah. <laughs> don't generalize it. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. I exactly also felt the same because um, they were just, in my class, we had a different observation, right? Because we started at the same time, I yes. think 8, 8 a.m., but we went to the different, different classes. classroom observation. And my observation was the students were just openly discussing, talking in English, which was so impressive. And plus, uh, it was a debate classroom. So they were just uh, talking about uh, of the topic of the debate. Mm -hmm. And one thing was that, first of all, they were not shy, as you say. And second of all, uh, the language was, oh my gosh, if I look back to my secondary school, how I was there. Mm -hmm. And if I compare to this Hungarian education, the, how they are speaking in English is so impressive. At their age, I mean, when I was at their age, I don't know what I was talking. I, even I don't remember if I was speaking English or yeah. not. Uh, but that was the impressive part I got to see. And what did you think about the 
teachers or the classroom structure oh, yeah. or the school itself was it different the school itself was it different from Myanmar schools mm, what was that mm-hmm. atmosphere that you feel uh, the physical buildings they are not I don't think you know I wouldn't say that it's different from Myanmar schools of course we are from different climates so <laughs> the structure the style might be different but the the facilities is not many differences I, I cannot find many differences Of course, this uh, Dobo Kataling is well equipped compared to high schools in my country. They have um, TV, you know, multi-purpose screen, and um, that's the the physical findings. And the teachers um, in the first class that I visited, she was really very open, kind, and she let the students, uh, you know, lead the class. They prepare quizzes for us about Estergom, of course. And, um, you know, students are, of course, making mistakes because they are speaking English. And the way the teacher corrects these mistakes is really impressive. Like, she's not blaming students. She's not saying that, hey, you said it wrong. <laughs> she let the student finish. And then she um, write down two different words and You should use this in this scenario, something like that. And I was like, wow, this is really, you know, warm and welcoming environment to learn a language, foreign language. And um, like like before, before I visited this high school, um, it was a common, you know, common narrative that I heard from Hungarians uh, when we discuss about this integration, Hungarian and international student integration. And most of the reason they said is uh, because of the language, they are not confident to speak in English. Um, I was like, I get it. I can, you know, relate to it. Absolutely. Because in my country, the way the, the education system uh, prepare for us to be able to speak English is like, it's not working because we focus uh, mainly on the exam and writing and reading. And memorization. And yes. And you can see most of the Myanmar students, they are really good at reading and writing, but what express doesn't you know what's don't yeah. come out of their mouths to express it and I, I totally understand and we are afraid to make mistakes because we learn this language from uh, starting from grammar we learn grammar first yes <laughs> you know without we, do, we didn't have any interaction any practical uh, speaking experiences practices so we always these grammatical rules are in our head and you know It's also uh, shut our mouth, like, what if I make a mistake? So yeah. I can understand, <laughs> but, you know, we can try. Yeah, we struggle to put the words yeah. where to where, it and it's hard to, com- I mean, build a sentence, right? But yes. for them, it was, wow. Yeah, I think that's because of this, you know, um, I cannot find a word for that. That the teacher, the teacher is creating this uh, safe atmosphere, you know, safe environment for the kids. It's okay; doesn't matter if we make mistakes. We can correct it. <laughs> so that's the first class. The first class I visited, uh-huh. it was great, and I I enjoyed it. And sometimes I even felt that, oh, if I were in this teacher's position. I would have more control <laughs> on ah. the kids because they are kidding. And, you know, in the middle of the, his presentation, he was joking about his friends <laughs> who were sitting there. And his, it was a great environment. But I would have, you know, I would have Try been, I don't know. Yeah, the classroom. More and, control. Yeah. And the second lesson, the second class we visited, it's a different teacher uh-huh. and very different approach. Yeah. She was very well prepared and she... she I can, we can see that and we can feel that control is in her hand. Yes. But still, um, the, the, she approached the lesson very, how to say, constructively. She explained the rules, what they are doing today, and then she let the students do it, a group work. And she encourages us to, you know, sit with the students and to Talk participate yes. in their work together. And the other, you know, PhD students, They they are sitting together and they were discussing each other with each other, and I try to you know sit with the a group of students next to me, and they were like, ah, sure you can sit. Uh, we are doing that in the beginning, but then they switch uh, language. <laughs> <laughs> they started to speak in Hungarian. I was like, okay, okay, I can understand because you know they have to finish this task. <laughs> yeah, they 
had the limited time. Yeah. So um, for the end of this podcast, I would like to ask about the project itself, the Learning from Asia project, because we started our podcast with your PhD journey in the university. Then we went to the... Uh, Doba Catalin mm -hmm. Secondary School. Now I would like to talk about the Learning from Asia project. So how were you intru introduced to it? And um, what's your opinion about it? I heard about it from Professor Gabor. Professor, Professor Halas. Uh -huh. He uh, One day he sent me this Asia is Method um, book. Mm -hmm. I think one chapter mm -hmm. on Professor Hong Ji Jong. Mm -hmm. And then he said there is, uh, he is, you know, participating in this project and there will be a monthly PhD student forum, Asian PhD forum. And if I'm interested, I can join. And I was like, absolutely, I'm interested. And I, I joined it. And since uh, the first meeting, I I don't think I missed uh, one meet, no, a single meeting because yeah. I enjoyed it. <laughs> That's how I was introduced to the project. And my opinion towards it is, um, okay, if I have two experiences regarding, uh, you know, things in Hungary, mm -hmm. which is my experience as a PhD student in LTE PPK mm -hmm. and as a participant in re, uh, a Learning from Asia project mm -hmm. in MCC, mm -hmm. at MCC. And um, I think participating in this project uh, is more flexible, relaxed, and um, I don't know, I am happy to, you know, put my uh, effort mm -hmm. into it because I don't feel like I am obligated to do something. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it because I like to do this. And uh, one thing not to forget to mention about it is, is Bimba, you. <laughs> <laughs> because of your, you know, management skills, I oh, would say, because I am you. a very sensitive, highly sensitive person. And I carefully choose people who I am, you know, communicating and working with. And um, I feel okay and comfortable to um, participate in this project. And I like the way you communicate with us the way you organized and um, I'm thankful for that <laughs> oh thank you so much that's so sweet <laughs> it's great to hear some feedbacks on my work <laughs> uh, so uh, while you are uh, integra integrating this learning from Asia project you actually uh, got to submit your paper and you got to present at the learning from Asia and education conference so Last few months, we had a long journey. And uh, uh, when you were participating in this Asian PhD forum, which is one element of the Learning from Asia project, and uh, when you are participating in this monthly forum, and when you are attending the conference, and when you were presenting at the conference, and when you were writing your paper uh, to the uh, project, uh, why you were you know, in going through this process, uh, did the project or did any of these things give you an impact to your uh, academic life or academic journey? Um, yes, yes, absolutely. If you mention <laughs> uh, a few things or uh -huh. one thing. Yeah, like I mentioned before, um, this cross-referencing, mm -hmm. inter-referencing, mm -hmm. um, that is a really great input for my own research, PhD research. Um, I got to know it because I participated in this project. And uh, when I was uh, preparing for this Learning from Asia and Education Conference presentation, I, I was uh, struggling to understand the concept of uh, translation. You know, there are three elements in HRS method, yes. uh, translation, uh, base entity, and Interreferencing. Yes. Uh -huh. And I get it. Base entity, interreferencing. I like it. I, I, I really enjoy to, you know, integrate it to my research. But translating, then um, finally I reach out to my supervisor and I ask, I am writing this. 
she she knew that I am participating in this project, and I sent her the book and the the references. And then I'm writing this. I'm trying to integrate my research with the, uh, from this perspective. And uh, I don't you know quite understand the concept of translating translation. And she replied to me with a long email, and she explained you know she tried to explain it, and. I was really grateful for that. Yeah, and she's very helpful. Yes. And I was like, whoo, okay. If I have to, you know, list things that Hungary gave me <laughs> and I am grateful for, uh, the first thing is my supervisor. For sure. And um, this Learning from Asia project also, you know, is also included in my list. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a great impact um, to participate in pro this project. Because, you know, not just... I got a paper to publish, um, not just, you know, participating in this and I get these experiences, but it has, it made huge impact on my own PhD thesis research. Mm, thank you for that. And I actually also feel the same, just to mention it. And uh, so this is my last question. Uh, if you, uh, let's, Suppose let's create a scenario that you are going to teach to MIMARS students. Mm -hmm. And what would you bring from Hungary and the Learning from Asia project? Mm, that's a great when question. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, I am always thinking, because I was once asked a similar question by Professor Gabor. What do you want to bring to your home country from Hungary? But your question is, what do I want to bring to my classroom? Classroom. And uh, yes, I would specify uh -huh. it. Yeah, sure. I, I am sure the, the first thing that I want to bring and I want to integrate my Hungarian experience to my classroom, to Myanmar students, is um, freedom of expression. You know, in the class, you can argue with me, you can challenge me. And that's even a good sign because to be able to... Uh, argue with your teacher you need to read a lot yes. <laughs> because you cannot um, start an argument f from nowhere mm -hmm. so that's the first thing I, I want to bring from Hungary to Even my class for the arguing as an Asian student you know we need we are in a way we are building our confidence yes in exactly. a certain way because in speaking against the teacher in Asia is something you know it's very hard to yeah. go through it because unless you raise your hand. Uh, so I think it's building confidence. And again, it's also building a communication skills and debating skills. If you are arguing, yes, you need to read certain things before you argue. And uh, is there anything else you would yes, like to Yes, yes, there is one more thing. Uh, that is uh, reflection. Mm -hmm. The what practice of reflecting. Um, it, when I was a master's student, um, my research also um, focused on self-assessment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tried to, you know, practice it <laughs> in my classroom. Like at the end of a semester, I, I asked my students, uh, give me a reflection, give me your feedback, like anonymously. I just make a form and write down things you want, you wish to improve, you know, if you were to take this class next time. And the students are not very comfortable, <laughs> although it's anonymous feedback. And here in Hungary, uh, you know, we have this uh, edit air workshop mm -hmm. uh, from my doctoral program. We had w two workshops every semester. And at the end of the semester, uh, the workshop, we received a feedback form <laughs> and we have to, you know, we have a chance to express our opinion on the previous workshop and our as an ideas. Organizer. No, uh, participants. All, as the, the, oh. all the participants for the next organizer to help the next organizer. You know, oh, wow. um, presentation section is boring, <laughs> for example. You can say that. Yeah, it's anonymous. Wow. No, oh, it's anonymous. Wow. It's anonymous online okay. form. And uh, also from Learning from Asia project as well. You know, after the conference, after the what is a pre-conference workshop, we got this uh, feedback form. Yes. We can write it. So I, I am, I would say personally, mm -hmm. <laughs> before, even before I came here, I was a very honest person. Mm -hmm. I don't feel uncomfortable to break the truth, <laughs> to say it out loud. But 
still, you know, I'm an Asian, grew up in that culture, so I have to phrase it nicely, wisely. Yes. <laughs> and, and now I am, I think hang, it, my experience as a PhD student in Hungary also helping me develop in that practice, you know, personal reflection or reflective practice um, to check, you know, how we are doing. I think that's what we are lacking from my, in my country. Mm -hmm. Because we try to be nice, <laughs> even when we ask, be honest, it's anonymous, I don't see who, who is writing this, say out loud, say the truth. Mm -hmm. But they still try to, you know, phrase it nicely. <laughs> I mean, it's good that they nicely phrase it, but you have to point it out so that we can improve next time. Wow, very interesting. I never thought about reflection, but... I think that's true. Yeah. Yes, I agree with. So uh, thank you, Thierry, for coming today. And thank you for your taking time. And thank you for the listeners. Uh, um, I hope today's topic was interesting for you. So we had a guest, Thierry, from Myanmar. And we tried to reflect on Hungarian education comparing with Myanmar education and I hope you liked it thank you everyone thank you for having me here and um, all the listeners <laughs> 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 you say let me brag <laughs> <laughs> the little expressions I know <laughs> thank you for listening to this MCC podcast episode for further media content please look up our English website at mcc.hu slash en or look for us on Facebook Instagram and Twitter If you want to read more by our professors, external contributors, and students, check out our knowledge base at corvinac.hu en.